gentlemen from Commonwealth who are visiting from various other jurisdictions. By design, our parliament represents the face of Kenya. Its diversity is unrivaled as a perennial feature of the institution. Every portion of Kenya, as well as every community, believe, shade of opinion, and occupation are represented. The representatives themselves are equally diverse, with members hailing from innumerable professional backgrounds and walks of life. Among our members of parliament are lawyers, doctors, engineers, including Sudi, hospitality professionals, <laughs> teachers, former military and police personnel, administrators, trade unionists, and businessmen in various networks and sectors. Yeah, somebody introduced to me Sudi as engineer Sudi, so I was just... <laughs> I celebrate this diversity and encourage you as leaders to embrace it as a platform to champion a Kenya that is strong and united, yet proudly diverse and inclusive. We must be more intentional in order to make this tremendous endowment count for the betterment of our nation. I am further encouraged to witness the fact that your appetite for diversity is not restricted to our local situation. You have partnered with the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association to host this seminar and brought on board facilitators from South Africa, the United Kingdom, Australia and Canada, as well as the United States of America through the good offices of the National Democratic Institute and the International Republican Institute. The objectives of this seminar are aligned with long-standing collaboration between Kenya and the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, as well as the agenda for the development of parliamentary democracy that we share throughout the Commonwealth family. Mr. Speaker, one outcome I look forward to with great anticipation is the emergence of a robust ethos of strong individual and collective parliamentary performance is cognizant that Parliament, the National Executive, and the Judiciary are ultimately arms of one government. Let me repeat that. One outcome that I look forward to with great anticipation is the emergence of a robust ethos of strong individual and collective parliamentary performance that is cognizant that Parliament, the National Executive, and the Judiciary are ultimately arms of one government. It is essential that we make significant progress in building a constructive synergy among the arms of government, which scrupulously observes constitutional boundaries, checks, and balances. At the same time, we must be capable of coordinating effectively towards the realization of our shared aspiration, the well-being of every citizen and their socioeconomic uplift through a radical transformation governance and in our economy. In order to achieve effective synergy between the arms of government, I have assigned the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, the role of coordinating and liaising with Parliament on the legislative agenda of government. And I have done so realizing the importance of there being a firm, definite link between the executive and parliament that facilitates the work of parliament, especially on requests from the executive. I have also assigned the Honorable Attorney General, Honorable Justin Muturi, the counterpart liaison role with the judiciary. I hope, dear Honorable Members, that you see, as I do, a collaborative framework along these lines is a viable means of deploying our leadership capabilities to address the issues that matter to Kenyans. It is 
in this spirit of effective coordination and constructive synergy that I wish to address the matter of dispute management. We are a proudly diverse but inclusive democracy. Parliament represents every shade of opinion in Kenya. Differences, disagreements, and divergent standpoints are inevitable. Something would be terribly wrong if we agreed all the time on everything. How we handle disagreement goes a long way to demonstrate our grasp of the parliamentary mandate. The name parliament originates from an old French word for speaking. Parliament is the national forum where the people, through their representatives, reason together on a continuous basis. Speaking with each other is the essence of the institution through debate, consultation, and negotiation over every matter until an acceptable position is reached. Parliament is not a place for picketing or heckling or holding demonstrations or holding other institutions at ransom. I must respectfully observe that the emerging practice of litigating disagreements through the courts not only contradicts the essential purpose of parliamentary institutions, it demonstrates the failure of parliament at the level of institution and at the member level. The people elected members of the National Assembly to perform their work through parliament, not the judiciary. If the people had wanted their representatives to litigate their matters in the courts, the Constitution would have 